welcome for the session in this session we are going to study how to measure the torque in the previous class we have studied how to measure the force the force is measured by using a direct method and indirect method if we are using direct method it is an analytical method analytical method again there are several types one is equal arm balance unequal arm balance and multiple lever systems so basically what we are concentrating on amplification of force that means can i measure large amount of force with the small effort basically it's a mechanical advantage load by effort again if we use a multiple lever system it is feasible to calculate the huge amount of force required in the machinery similarly we have studied indirect method also indirect method is a strain gauge or a load cell indirect method here we are calculating the force with the help of measuring the acceleration f is equal to ma whereas in direct method we will compare force with the known weights w is equal to mg that is a thing we will be using in direct method similarly let us see how to measure the torque basically in a mechanical engineering torque is very important torque is simply we can call it as a rotating force the force into rotating distance is nothing but torque more so ever the torque will be exerted in several ways if i write a lever if this is a force and sorry this is a length and this is a force f into l is the torque generated again with the help of leverage principle we can measure the torque mathematically torque moment of force they are all same whereas torque is having only one force if the moment of force if we say moment of force or a couple there will be a two equal and opposite forces will be acting if i say only one force it is a torque if i say two it is a moment two equal and opposite forces it forms a couple force into distance is also a torque or moment or a couple so the general aspects mathematically these three looks like same but what is a torque is torque is actually a, a rotating distance it will form a twist it will form a rotary that means with the increase of force with the increase of force in the torque the device or the object will tries to rotate that means it will constitutes a rotation that is nothing but a torque once if you find out what is a torque we can find out what is a power power is nothing but omega t omega is nothing but angular velocity angular velocity is nothing but 2 pi n by 60 so divided by 60 is conversion from rps to rpm to rps generally t is the torque w is the angular velocity and p is the power will be obtained in watts or kilowatts that's why divided by 60 so this is how we will calculate the power using torque once once if we know what is a torque we can easily calculate the power let us take a simple example of measuring torque in an engine so basically what it will happen the principle equipped in measuring the torque is a dynamo principle dynamo is a device which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy it is reverse of motor motor is a device which converts mechanical electrical energy into mechanical energy so fan if you take an example if the switch oning the power supply what you are giving is an electrical energy the output what you are getting is rotation the reverse of the motor is nothing but a fan sorry dynamometer the reverse of a motor is nothing but a dynamo dynamo is a device which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy so when we say dynamo meter it is having an equipment to measure torque or power there is a provision for measurement of torque 
how to measure a torque again torque is measured using mechanical energy absorption when we say it is absorption of mechanical energy those are nothing but it is absorption dynamometer that means we can transmit the mechanical energy from one form to other form or else we can absorb that what is the mechanical energy so that absorption is nothing but it is an absorption dynamometer if we transmit a mechanical energy it is a transmission dynamometer in the engine what happens mechanical energy is converted into a rotation and then we will be measuring the torque that is the one principle of dynamometer once if you know the torque 2 pi into by 60 will give you what is the power so the output of the engine the power is measured that power is called as brake power brake power is given by omega into t it is angular velocity multiplied by torque again there we are measuring the torque in terms of power dynamometers are classified into two groups one is absorption dynamometer and another one is transmission dynamometer absorption dynamometer which absorbs mechanical energy transmission dynamometer which transmits mechanical energy in form of a power it can be a belt drive or a gear train or simply a torsion meter so in your syllabus they have mentioned what is absorption dynamometer what is prony brake and what is rope brake if in the question if they ask explain absorption dynamometer with an example means you can define what is an absorption dynamometer then you can explain any of this one out of these two you can explain any one if specifically ask prony brake dynamometer you can write absorption dynamometer these two sketches out of one you can write whichever is easy you can write that then apart from these two there are other dynamometers like hydraulic dynamometer electro dynamometer etc hydraulic dynamometer it is a dynamometer which measures the torque here the force is expressed in terms of hydraulic pressure electrical dynamometer is a device which again calculates the torque here there is no for calculation for force or torque directly it will give what is the power in our home there is an energy meter one units of electricity two units of electricity like that there is a meter for measuring the torque here torque is not measured directly power is measured how many powers one unit of electric current 1 kg per kilowatt hour that is the unit of electric current that will be measured so that is an electrical dynamometer let us see individually what exactly is an absorption dynamometer this is a prony brake dynamometer whenever there is a break in a dynamometer whenever there is a break in the system in the measurement of system you are measuring torque that's all the brakes are working like a friction that means whenever you apply a brake in a automobile the vehicle will stop because of friction during which the mechanical energy is being absorbed hence it is called as absorption dynamometer whenever there is a brakes for the rotation you will be opposing some force that force will absorb a mechanical energy that is nothing but absorption dynamometer here this is a sketch of prony brake dynamometer here there is a output shaft or a flywheel for the flywheel you will observing you will be applying some brake by using the ropes and wooden blocks because of which what happens the force will get opposed the torque will be induced because of opposing the rotary motion so what exactly is the torque generated here is torque will be how much force you are applying in order to stop this a flywheel using wooden blocks if i neglect a diameter of the rope then the force will be the torque will be force multiplied by l this is a torque which is obtained in rope brake dynamometer if you want more force either you can 
if you want more torque either you can increase force or you can increase length longer the length usually the deflection takes place if the rotation is limited if the rotation is beyond such rpm then what happens the if you apply brake suddenly with a long length it may have moved away from the center that means because of this high length centrifugal forces may affect so this is a torque and what is a power power is nothing but omega into t omega is angular velocity it is a rotation why we have to consider omega t is because here it is a rotary omega is 2 pi n by 60 and into t what is our torque here f into l into 2 pi n by 60 this is a power which is obtained in prony brake dynamometer whenever you use mechanical systems whenever we use brakes these brakes are subjected to friction because of friction because of friction temperature increases because of this we need to provide cooling this is a first step and even the coefficient of friction will also varies if the coefficient of friction is constant then it won't apply brake if it varies then the surfaces are different hard surface will be subjected to fall on a soft surface then there will be a certain grips or there is a brake again tightening arrangement is provided in order to achieve a betterment of torque that means in order to reduce the centrifugal force because of length tightening arrangement will be provided this is about rho prony brake dynamometer again here the magnification of torque can be done with the increase in the size of length of liver arm you can increase the length of the liver arm and all are fixed that means if we consider the dynamics of an output shaft the dynamics of the output shaft is affected only because of this force f other forces are neglected because other forces are very small compared to this this force is dominated so we are not considering any velocity we are not considering any other forces rather than f that means only torque is being considered this is about prony brake dynamometer let us see what is rope brake dynamometer in prony brake dynamometer again wear and tear will be happen since due to wear and tear the wooden blocks may get damaged even sometimes the shaft may also get damaged the perimeter of shaft it may get damaged because of proper usage in order to avoid this we can have a pressure plate in between these two so that it can withstand the wear and tear also the pressure of braking can be controlled again if we do that arrangement the cost of prony brake dynamometer will be increasing in order to reduce this they have done another arrangement it is nothing but a rope brake arrangement already i said whenever there is a brake usage in the system measuring system it is measuring the torque with the help of friction that means it is observing a mechanical energy that is our concept behind this here what they have done is along with brake they have put weights and they have put a spring that means if the brake drum is being rotated if the brake drum is being rotated I need to stop this how to stop this I will be stopping this with the help of rope this rope is contributing some amount of length here in case of the torque after that because of this known weight because of this friction between rope and brake drum the device will be stopping also meanwhile there is a spring balance is provided in order to reduce the fluctuation of the weight that means if i apply brake suddenly there might be problem in case of it will lock the rope drum as well as the brake 
in order to avoid this instead of applying the brake in one stretch the spring will helps us to reduce uh, apply the brake gradually reduce the speed gradually that is a concept behind this let us see what is a torque again torque is nothing but force into rotating distance here rotating distance is it can be a radius of brake drum and small contribution is radius of rope that is also there so whenever we calculate force the force is nothing but weight minus spring weight so w minus s into r so this r can be rb plus rr sometime or just it can be rb if i neglect the radius of the rope drum so w minus s into rb by neglecting radius of rope this is a torque then what is the power power is omega t because it is a rotary what is omega omega is 2 pi n by 60 into w minus s into rb so this is a equation for power this is how we will be generating the torque using dynamometer here also mechanical energy is being absorbed moreover here the spring weight should be lesser than the known weight otherwise what happens it will not satisfy the equilibrium condition this is very important condition and radius of brake is considered because compared to brake radius rope radius is small hence rope radius is neglected they have only considered the brake drum radius so basically it is a force into rotating distance that itself is the torque again this is also a mechanical system here also the wear and tear takes place but comparatively less because here wooden blocks are there here ropes are there replacing the ropes are very easy compared to wooden blocks that is a flexibility what we are getting and this is how we will measure the torque using loads in case of engines this is another advantage here again since we have used rope this rope is having movements when we rotate the brake drum that means because of fluctuations of movements in rope again there will be a fluctuation of loads will be there so fluctuation of load will be more here in this case here since we have used wooden blocks the fluctuation is comparatively less so here it won't give a stable force output or a torque output it is very difficult to measure the force because of oscillations even the spring since the stiffness of the spring is less compared to weights after some time it may become stable it may not become stable that is the limitation here in order to reduce this what they have developed is they have used hydraulic dynamometers obviously the cost will be more compared to this rope brake dynamometer cost is less whereas hydraulic dynamometer the cost is more also they have used electrical dynamometers in the electrical dynamometers directly the power is being calculated or measured let us see what is hydraulic dynamometer the same arrangement here there is a output shaft we will provide a hydraulic system because of hydraulic systems the friction are less here comparatively friction is less compared to a mechanical system that is very important and again hydraulic the cost will be high because we need to provide a water reservoir and that fluid will is will be moved here and this will be rotated here basically the system will be rotated and there will be a reaction arm from the reaction arm we will be measuring the force force is nothing but it is pressure into area again what is pressure pressure is here we will be calculating it can be a static pressure or it can be a dynamic pressure and this is the concept we are measuring force is equal to pressure into area here friction is less friction is less since it is a hydraulic it will give a accurate force by the use of force we can measure what is a torque torque is equal to again force into radius again by calculating torque we can measure what is a power
in the syllabus hydraulic dynamometer is not there but better to know this and another one another dynamometer is electrical dynamometer as the name itself indicates electrical dynamometer here we won't measure torque we will measure torque in terms of power so i will write what is power power is equal to omega t first we will be measuring what is power then we will measure torque this is a dc dynamometer dc dynamometer is nothing but a dc direct current is being generated it can be a ac dynamometer again only the change is power supply there are two bearings the shaft is being rotated and other shaft is attached here because of which it is a general principle of again generator how we will measure the torque here there is a torque arm from the torque arm we will be finding what is power from the ohm's law we know the voltage is directly proportional to current v is equal to i r what is the power in case of electrical system this is power in case of mechanical system what is the power in case of electrical system it is v into i what is i using ohm's law it is v by r so power will be equal to v square by r so this is for dc when we take up ac power will be equal to v i cos phi where phi is the phase angle this is for ac again phase angle will be varying based on phase angle you will get different power graphs so this is how we will be measuring the power in turn we can calculate what is the torque so this is about dynamometers basically there are two types one is absorption and transmission when we take up mechanical dynamometer these two are the mechanical dynamometer one is absorption where mechanical energy is being absorbed another one is transmission dynamometer where mechanical energy is being transmitted these two are mechanical dynamometer also electrical dynamometer also hydraulic dynamometer absorption dynamometer these two we have taken prony break and rope break the basic principle is same torque is equal to force into radius and power is equal to omega into t then hydraulic dynamometer in order to reduce the friction between wear and friction between the movements of parts we will be using hydraulic dynamometer friction is comparatively less force is measured in terms of pressure again electrical dynamometer directly power is measured if it is a ac vi cos phi it will be v square by r into cos phi even you can write the same expression in terms of i also but basically handling the current is difficult that's why we will be measuring the voltage then if it is a dc p is equal to vi this is about dynamometer let us study in detail what is pressure measurement system so how to measure the pressure that is the next topic here measurement of pressure again for a mechanical engineering it is very important to know what is the pressure because pressure intensification that means increase of pressure he is very dangerous it may cause high damages to the industry that's why in the industry itself they have limited according to the standard the pressure should be up to certain limit so it should not cross the pressure the intensification of pressure is not required because the system may get damages let us see how to measure a pressure before that let us understand what is a pressure mathematically pressure is nothing but it is a force across unit area so when we say it is a static pressure this formula is applicable p is equal to f by a static pressure is a pressure which is constant in all directions that is a static pressure pascal's law will be giving p is equal to f by a p is identical in all direction provided it is having in a confined that means if you pour a water on the glass because of confined nature of the glass the pressure is same in all direction it is a static pressure the unit of pressure is newton per meter square or pascal or bar so one bar is equal to 10 to the power of 5 pascals this is also a unit of pressure pressure can be measured in bars kilopascal pascal and newton per meter square 
let us understand the different terminologies in case of a pressure there are several pressures first in order to understand the concepts let us see what is the total pressure total pressure is nothing but it is the atmospheric pressure plus absolute pressure atmospheric pressure minus absolute pressure so why this what is this atmospheric pressure if you measure pressure at atmosphere it is atmospheric pressure what is that at atmospheric pressure it is at atmosphere at earth atmosphere there the pressure is constant it is 101.325 kilopascal if you measure pressure at this then it is a atmospheric pressure then there are other terms another one is absolute pressure what is absolute pressure it is absolute value of f by a you are measuring pressure using f by a if it is a static pressure if you measure that f by a directly then it will be a absolute pressure generally some of the times absolute pressure corresponding to that point is absolute temperature the pressure the temperature at 0 kelvin that is absolute temperature similarly absolute pressure is if you measure the absolute value of f by a it is absolute pressure then the total pressure total pressure is nothing but atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure in other words absolute pressure is nothing but atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure what is this gauge pressure gauge pressure is if you measure pressure above the atmospheric pressure it is called as gauge pressure if you measure the pressure below the atmospheric pressure it is nothing but negative gauge pressure also it is called as vacuum pressure then barometric pressure it is a pressure at atmospheric so absolute to atmospheric if you measure it is a barometric pressure so there are different terms uh, atmospheric pressure if you measure pressure at atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure gauge pressure the pressure above the atmospheric pressure is called as gauge pressure the pressure below the atmospheric pressure is called negative gauge pressure it is also called as vacuum pressure here positive gauge pressure is simply a gauge pressure but the negative gauge pressure is vacuum pressure again absolute pressure absolute pressure can be defined as it is atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure that means it is the absolute value of f by a and there is another two terms one is static pressure and dynamic pressure if pressure is identical in all directions it is a static pressure if pressure is changing that means if there is a pressure gradient exerts then it is called as dynamic pressure whenever there is absolute pressure that means static pressure you will be finding pascal's law you will be finding pressure using pascal's law similarly if you are in dynamic pressure dynamic pressure bernoulli's equation p by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z that is the equation for dynamic pressure so this is about pressure instruments basically you have to know what is absolute pressure what is atmospheric pressure and what is gauge pressure these three terminology are very important let us see what are the different pressure measuring device pressure measuring device it can be a mechanical instruments electromechanical instruments or electrical instruments if i say pressure by using mechanical instruments in mechanical instruments again direct and indirect method like that there are two things here also pressure measurement is made direct by comparison of unknown pressure with known force so unknown pressure with known force this is the first method of measuring the pressure another one is quantitative deformation of elastic members so you will be using elastic members elastic members will be deflected or deformed because of which you will be calculating the pressure that is nothing but it is a pressure due to elastic members then electromechanical devices there are two devices you will be using one is electrical and another one is mechanical mechanical devices will be calculating what is the pressure will be measuring what is the pressure but electrical devices will be recording what is the pressure measured in the system the best example is a digital indicator where the pressure is being sensed and then it is recorded in electrical values then electrical physical change 
that means it is inducting some change pressure transducers will be used in case of electrical systems next pressure measuring transducer i need to measure the pressure i need to have a transducer there are several type one is gravitational type it is a piston piston p is equal to f by a that is one of the thing we will be using and liquid columns uh, i want to measure the height of the carrier's dam i want to measure the pressure of the carrier's dam how to measure p is equal to rho g h static pressure so liquid columns they have used then direct acting elastic types bordon tube bellows again these are the several transducers will be using in order to measure what is the pressure then if i say pressure measuring instruments one is bridgeman gauge that is one of the important instrument we will be using pressure so it is based on the direct principle of measurement of pressure where the pressure is measured in terms of a resistance r is the resistance r is equal to r1 into 1 plus alpha p that is how we will be measuring the pressure using bridgeman gauge so if they ask this they should write an equation this is not there in our syllabus but it is a basic instrument to measure pressure then another one is mcleod pressure mcleod gauge instrument this is very important and this is based on a boyle's law the simple is with the increase of capillary rise and capillary fall will be comparison will be comparing that with a capillary tube and it is showing what is a displacement y because of which the pressure is being calculated let us see how to calculate pressure using mcleod gauge this consists of a bulb it can be a manometer also you can use then a movable reservoir which is filled with a mercury mercury is filled it is a heavy liquid then the mercury is filled and there is a opening here throttle it will go to bulb capillary and also it will go to reference capillary so there is a vacuum provided here that vacuum is filled here it is a p so there are two things i will call it as one is c and another one is b this i will be sectioned this is a b and this is a c i will be calculating the pressure at this limb and pressure at this limb let us see the first one is according to boyle's law the boyle's law state that the pressure is inversely proportional to volume at constant temperature this is a boyle's law so if i use boyle's law i can write an expression so p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 this is a according to the boyle's law this is a pressure what it is induced so if i use p1 v1 here i can use p into vb volume of the bulb into pc into vc that i can use so similarly pb into vb is equal to pc into vc here what is the pressure at the bulb e is nothing but it is a p vacuum pressure p so p v b is equal to p c into v c that is a equation with the help of this i will be calculating what is a p c pressure at capillary tube v in p into v b divided by v c so this is the pressure at capillary tube after finding p c i will be calculating the differential pressure p c minus p what is this p c minus p pressure at c minus p p c minus p will be equal to y this is a displacement then after calculating this i will be using the same expression p b v b minus is equal to p c into v c here p into v b is equal to p c into v c i need to calculate what is this p c p c is nothing but using this p plus y into v c what is v c p plus y into v c is nothing but volume of c volume of c will be equal to a into y it is like area into velocity so i will write a into y then after finding this i will be finding out what is the expression for p so p into ay plus ay square will be equal to p into vb 
I will take pressures on one side, so it will be equal to P into VB minus AY is equal to AY square. Then I will be calculating what is the pressure. P will be equal to AY square divided by VB minus AY. This is the equation, but I will be neglecting the AY because comparatively it is very less pressure. So P will be equal to AY square by VB. This is the equation for pressure of MacLeod gauge. Here directly what I can do is directly calibrate with micrometer. So this I will be directly calibrating with a micrometer. I will get the distance then it is pressure. By using this formula I can find out what exactly is the pressure. Here I can measure up to 10 to the power of minus 2 to 10 to the power of plus 2 micrometer in the with in the calibrations. So this is how we will be measuring the pressure in MacLeod cage. Basically it is suited for low pressure measurement. Let us see what is another device that is thermal conductivity gauge. It is Pirani thermal conductivity gauge. The basic principle here is the pressure is directly proportional to temperature. The pressure is directly proportional to temperature. With the use of this we will be measuring what is the pressure. Here the temperature is being supplied here vacuum pressure because of this it will get heated up and we can find out what is the pressure. The pressure difference will be created because of higher temperature region to lower temperature region. Even, even you can find out what is the thermal conductivity value for this thermal conductivity by measuring the heat transfer rate Q is equal to Ka delta T divided by L. Even that is also possible. The concept here is the pressure is directly proportional to temperature. By measuring the temperature we will be calculating pressure in thermal conductivity gauge. So this is nothing but Pirani thermal conductivity gauge. So this is about pressure measurement instrument. Also the pressure can be measured with the use of elastic members. You can use bellows. So you can use uh, bellows means it will be like this. Then you can use strain gauges. There are several things to measure the pressure. So these are the pressure using elastic members. You can use, you can measure the pressure using elastic members. That is also possible here. So here we have studied in this module, we have studied measurement of force, measurement of torque and measurement of pressure up to here. Measurement of force direct and indirect, measurement of torque, absorption dynamometer, and transmission dynamometer along with hydraulic and electric. So basically mechanical, hydraulic and electric. Mechanical has an absorption as well as transmission dynamometers. Then pressure, again pressure, we, def we define some of the important terms in the pressure. Then we have studied some of the devices like MacLeod gauge and Pirani thermal conductivity gauges. So very important, depending upon the question you have to write. Thank you.